Hello, good morning everyone. It's uh, morning for you, it's uh, evening for me here in Japan. Uh, thank you for attending this um, seminar. Uh, this presentation is about the digitally enabled modular housing in the UK and uh, some benefits and risks. I'm a professor of structural engineering at City University of London and uh, as you can imagine I will talk about research as well as I will talk about what we think that they are the important uh, next steps that need to be done in order to progress and advance with a modular construction and in more general with the modern methods of construction. The topic will cover four main parts. The first one is about the modular construction markets uh, the second one is a circular economy via reuse, so we'll talk a little bit about the reuse and the benefits that we can gain through that and how that can change the mindset of the way that we design today. Then we'll talk about modular buildings and in particular the design of the connections for modular buildings. Uh, I consider these being the catalyst in what we're doing. And we will end this presentation with a track and trace uh, plus some digital twins for reuse. So I'm sure this is something that you have seen before and you may have heard today from others as well. The modular construction market is quite big already and is growing at a fast pace. So it is expected that by 2026 it's going to be over 100 billion dollars and is not only covering commercial but also hospitality, healthcare, education institutions as well as uh, of course other residential housing. So we are talking about a market that uh, it has come to stay and is not a secondary market as it was maybe considered a few years ago but we're talking about a shift in the construction sector and a market that will dominate in the next few years, from the next few years and on. Here we'll try to see a little bit more about what's happening, what's the big picture. On the left hand side we can see the housing demand versus the labour rates and you can easily tell that the UK it's got a high supply but also high demand issue. It's not as um, big as it is in Japan or Australia or in the US. However, um, uh, it is in, in, uh, the, amongst these countries that they actually have a uh, relatively high housing demand. On the right hand side, we see more clearly what is the current offsite share of housing in percentage. And you can see quite clearly that the first two countries, or the first two boxes, better say, Nordic countries, Finland, Norway and Sweden, they do have quite significant percentage of um, offside housing, followed by Japan, that is got quite significant also. Uh, at the moment where I am in Japan, in fact, my hotel is an offside building. It was built offside. I'm not sure if it's very good that you can actually tell though. Um, followed by Germany and then other countries such as China, Australia and in the UK we're talking only about the 5% of the housing which is offsite yet. So despite all these efforts, despite um, all this promotion and research that has been done the past um, I would say around 5 to 10 years, most aggressively the last 5 years, still the housing uh, in offsite is quite low. Again, another picture that gives you a better mapping of the countries that they do research on modular construction. And you will see that this is driven by countries such as the US, Canada, Australia, then work that has been done in, um, in the United Kingdom and that is quite contradictory with what we saw previously that we do quite a lot of research but this is not really translated to solutions out there in the market and then other countries such as uh, China I would say China at the moment is doing more research on modular construction than the UK so uh, it has overgone that one and then of course other countries here and there 
Now, you may wonder why in some countries there is um, more application of modular construction, of off-site housing, but there is less research as opposed to what is happening in uh, China, Australia, UK and the US. And the reasoning is pretty simple. In the red square in this side of the, of the graph, we have countries in which there are many mega cities. And if those mega cities where the plot of land is quite expensive, we tend to build very often very high buildings, very tall buildings, so skyscrapers, better say. So this is one of the reasons that we cannot really use much of modular construction at the moment for housing, as opposed to what is happening in the Nordic countries, which uh, there are no very, very tall buildings, and most of them are two, three, four storey, low to medium storey structures, uh, especially when it comes to housing, and those ones can easily be made by off-site manufacturing techniques. We all know the benefits of modern methods of construction. It doesn't need me to highlight them again. However, it is important to say that there are also some deficiencies, some barriers and drawbacks that comes uh, with using modern methods of construction and especially focusing more on modular construction as well as off-site construction. So to highlight two very important ones, one is the transportation and the logistics. That is one of the main constraints. It is very much related to where we build and what sort of structure we build. And the second is the lack of standardization and with that, the lack of codes and standards that engineers can use and easily come up with a design. Mostly they have to rely on each manufacturer and different products that are out there. They have to trust the manufacturer, they have to trust the engineer and get those designs straight away, which again imposes a little bit of a problem of how you analyze that when you want to do the global analysis of a building. However, as we just said, there are many benefits of using modular construction. And the most important of all for me is the time, uh, better say the time savings. So uh, there are a lot of discussions between engineers and they may uh, argue that and say that um, uh, off-site construction and modular construction, it comes with a lot of costs in terms of materials, in terms of uh, new systems, even in terms of weight of um, the, the structures that we build. However, the time saving uh, it is an important factor that leads to significant money savings. I would say that it is imperative at this moment of time to actually find more funding opportunities to support researchers and engineers that they work in this sector in order to transform the construction sector as, as we speak. So one of the issues that I have highlighted here as one of the uh, deficiencies is actually the lack of funding as well, which is not a lot. And in fact, we would like the industry to support researchers and come up with more information, more data in order to use and move on with um, the new era of modern methods of construction. We wanted to better understand what is the funding that has been put towards modular construction the last, uh, say, about 10 years. So we did our investigation uh, by searching online and we found out that only those grants that you see on the picture were funded and surprisingly they all were funded by Innovate UK, in other words by knowledge transfer partnerships between a company and a university where the company is also contributing to the funding. The issue that arises from that is that these fundings are mostly for transferring the knowledge from the university to um, the companies, meaning that there is no cross collaboration in generating new knowledge, innovative knowledge, 
as well as these are not collaborative grants between companies, which uh, shows to us that the uh, companies are not uh, in favor of collaborating with potential competitors and they are limiting the, the studies and of course the products that they get out of it. We did the same, but now we're looking for the prefabrication, prefabricate projects, prefab, we've checked all the words. And as you can see, all the projects that came up, they were not costed because these are pretty much um, EPSRC case studies. So we're talking about PhD projects where the money comes from the university instead of the UKRI. So very limited work has been done in the UK, although um, there is a clear need of modular construction and uh, off-site construction in, in the UK, as we saw before. Moving on, uh, when we did the same study with uh, modular construction as well as prefab in the um, European projects supported by the European Commission, we can see that there is a good, relatively good number of projects out there. Unfortunately, none of the projects was led by the UK. You can see here uh, one project only highlighted in which the UK had a very serious presence and I think the Steel Construction Institute was also part of ModCons for the development of modular construction for sustainable design stability and seismic applications. But most of the other projects actually were not led or coordinated by any, Euro, any UK partner. And there are projects out there, such as the ELISA project. For those who don't know that, that was one of the biggest European funded projects on modular construction. And it tried to design energy efficient, lightweight, sustainable, safe steel construction. Uh, it is a very high TRL project. So a lot of products actually were commercialized after the completion of that. So we need more of these kind of projects in order to help the market find solutions. So here I'm moving on to talk a little bit about the reuse and how that blends very nicely with the modular construction. So first of all, let's clarify that reuse is uh, far better when it comes especially to steel than recycling, which is a very energy intense process. So reusability is something that is coming up more and more. And I think modern methods of construction and modular construction in particular, they give us this uh, advantage of being able to be reused. Uh, if that is combined successfully with the standardization so that different systems, different volumetric panels from different companies, they can all be standardized and we'll see later on, we'll talk about the connections in a way, then um, uh, these can um, uh, foster the collaboration uh, between companies and strengthen the UK market uh, and its presence out there. So I think that uh, reuse and modular construction via standardization must be uh, the key theme here. It is worth clarifying that the reuse of structural steel has become more and more often lately. There are great examples in the UK as well. Here we see an example from Switzerland where three buildings were deconstructed and the steel members, uh, the reclaimed steel was sent to stockists and then it was reused for new designs. So. Uh, when I was giving a similar presentation about six, seven months ago, the landscape was quite different. Nowadays, there are a lot of companies that are involved into the reuse of steel to begin with. And uh, there is much more knowledge and technology that can help us to uh, reclaim uh, safely, um, restore repurpose if need be and then reuse those reclaimed elements. Of course, enabling efficient reuse is easier said than done. Uh, we're not just referring to like-to-like -like matching of the uh, 
members used in a building with the reclaimed members that they are in a stockyard. We're talking about more sophisticated, advanced tools that can be used and consider a number of parameters as we can see transportation, demolition, deconstruction and fabrication and assembly. Everything has to be pulled together and um, come up with optimal solutions. The good thing is nowadays we have the technology. Uh, there is need for more research to be done on that, but we can move towards um, that sort of uh, redesign of structures. One of the most prominent solutions when it comes to the use of uh, modular construction uh, as well as reuse is a new design philosophy that um, includes a permanent host structure where it's mostly built like what we build today but is called the means to accommodate changeable living modules that can be plugged in and out and uh, repair pushed, um, repaired, rehabilitated, renovate them and put back in place onto the structure. So uh, solutions like this one that you see here uh, can advance our technology and can actually transform the construction sector to uh, something that we haven't seen yet. In both modular construction sector as it is today or what is going to be in the future, such as the previous new philosophy presented, the problem at the moment that we're facing is the complexity of the modular systems. And I must say that in most cases this complexity is becoming worse and worse. So engineers have to think about the design, not only of the system, of the structure, but also to design for transportation, for installation, deconstruction and reuse. And the key in all this is to design for damage-free connections and therefore damage-free um, uh, volumetrics or panels. So as you can imagine, because of that, a lot of researchers, they put emphasis on the connectors between the volumetrics or the panels. So there is a lot of research that is coming up the last, uh, I would say, about five years from all over the world talking about high performance connectors. And it makes sense why. In a recent study that we published with my group, we have highlighted over 60 different joints that they are coming out from different research groups as well as industry. And uh, clearly all those 60 odd connections, they are competing to each other. So we are talking about um, a very good research that is done very recently, that is though creating a kind of a competitive but also bad environment because the issue here is the lack of standardization. So engineers don't really know how to use those connections and even if they use them, they can't really check them. In my group at City University, we've identified those issues and we're not really trying to come up with a new uh, type of connection that it will create more complexity. In fact, the opposite, we're looking more carefully all sorts of systems. We're looking at steel and light gate steel modular building systems. We're looking at timber systems, as you will see in the next slide. And we're trying to study very carefully what are those uh, limitations by using today's connections and how we can improve these without using uh, things that uh, engineers will not be comfortable with. So we are trying to uh, rethink the way that those modules, um, those volumetrics or panels, they connect to each other in a more resilient and sustainable way, but also make it simplest for the engineers. So we have come up with um, design installations and deconstruction methodologies and after that point we actually finalized the design of the connection because for us it was important to be able to reuse those components and systems damage free so 
It's not that um, a vibration or acoustics or seismic or uh, wind loading was our main objective. The main objective was reuse and then we walk backwards in order to come up with the most sophisticated solutions. Yes, indeed, in some cases we've also tested advanced uh, material solutions such as using uh, interlocking connections with reconfigurable structures uh, which are made by uh, hybrid materials. We've looked at flexible and adaptable fit for all connections with um, FGMs, functionally graded materials that they have um, uh, different stiffnesses such as cellar periodic material for seismic isolators and negative stiffness elements for other kind of materials. Uh, but more holistically, we look at the entire system, how it works. So in our studies, we are coming up with solutions. Uh, we've started, as I said, with steel and timber volumetric construction. And then we proposed uh, the um, uh, connection properties that can be used to a multi-story building. We come up with the design and optimization methodologies, as you can see here. And uh, of course, the final solutions uh, are tested and compared between other solutions to see whether it does make a difference using them. We all appreciate that the construction sector is a pretty weak network and uh, there is need for more opportunities to strengthen it by using emerging technologies. And um, in order to realize what we've just said before about the reuse and the modular construction, the demountability, damage free, and looking at the bigger perspective, looking at holistically what needs to be done, we have thought about engaging more with um, technological advancements. So we've looked at this KPMG 2016 table, which actually shows that things like drones, the beam, building information modeling, and remote sensing, things that we use nowadays for structural health monitoring, have been used quite a lot, yet not significant differences have been noticed. On the other hand, smart sensors, uh, RFID tags and um, robotics for automated um, uh, uh, technologies have not been used much. So we thought that if we engage with these kind of sensors and RFIDs, maybe we can make a change here. And this is what we did. So our circular economy model is to enable track and trace using RFID tags integrated with BEAM of course by employing some smart sensors and we have come up with the research proposal which is presenting the different types of stages of the research that need to be done in order to complete that project so put simply we need to be able to record digitally our stock our materials out there whatever can be reclaimed and whatever is on the stockyards and whatever is already used in a second life, um, has been already used and uh, recorded and of course uh, keep that over the life cycles of the material. Together with that we have come up with a digital protocol that includes levels of information for the track and trace in order to realize that track and trace and the reusability of structural components it is focusing more on the modular components reuse for the UK. And as you can see, we have uh, a number of properties, uh, information as we call it, which is related to the service history attributes and some others that they are related to the nominal attributes. And within that is the material, the deployment, uh, recovery connections and the regeneration. So. Uh, what we're trying, in fact, to do here is to have two sets of data. One is a static data that is um, living in the digital as well as the physical products. And that includes information such as uh, the date of production of that specimen, um, 
or the, uh, who, is the, who is the manufacturer, the nominal properties, etc. And some dynamic data that they will sit on the digital twin of that product as well as on the physical products um, when the RFID tag is updated. And that is more related to uh, environmental conditions that this element has gone through, any check that has been done on the element and the information that lives there. So we're trying to engage that physical and digital, making a digital model that actually is having as much information as possible. So what the 3D ABC program is, the 3D ABC stands for 3D Modular Building Connections, but it goes beyond the connections itself, is actually talking about um, anything with regards to DFMA, to uh, design for deconstruction, uh, modular construction, including the connections. So it's split in three main themes, the digital design and engineering, the uh, novel material systems testing and certification, which I feel is one of the most important ones, especially if we're about to use reclaimed elements and uh, use them again and again, and the construction automation and off-site manufacturing. And we're trying to look at all these three themes at the same time in order to progress with the research as well as to come up with a better products. In terms of advanced building systems and assembly techniques, we're looking at timber systems, um, uh, uh, prefabricated concrete, as well as steel systems. When it comes to high performance materials for modular systems, we're looking at um, different materials that are lightweight, fire resistant, and of course affordable, so how we can change existing materials with new ones that they still do the job, if not, they're better. We're looking at the DFMA uh, by looking at different ways of uh, panels and volumetrics are manufactured in-house, so different techniques, different equipment, um, and different technical knowledge that can be offered by manufacturers. Of course, we go through the design testing and system optimization. So we have a heavy structures lab and we fully utilize that by testing those um, connections or panels or um, uh, 3D volumetrics or slabs of um, mo prefabricated modular systems. And of course, we're also trying to use that in terms of um, uh, applications for on-site construction monitoring. So how can we use robotics and drones and AI inspection for better understanding what these buildings go through and how these um, systems that are going to be reused in the future, uh, how they have been loaded and what they've gone through. So to understand, for instance, the environmental degradation of a structural member, structural component. So now that I have given a more like holistic understanding of modular construction and what we can achieve via the reuse and in particular the research that we do on both connections as well as panels and systems, materials and digital solutions, I would like to highlight what the main benefits and risks are. And I would like to say them in a way that um, the industry in particular is getting more engaged with um, researchers and engineers that they are trying to work in these fields because we have identified after many years of research that if we don't change these ones most probably we won't be able to drive the uh, modular construction internationally. So uh, I'll, I'll start with the obvious one, which is reuse. So we need to find ways that whatever we build, we think about the reuse, the installation, the deconstruction, as I said before. The second one is to be um, uh, less fearful in order to adapt uh, new technologies, such as the RFID tags, smart sensors, um, autonomous construction techniques, especially when it comes to repair and removal of components, 
uh, that are going to be deconstructed or uh, rehabilitated. Um, of course, we all use BIM, but use BIM uh, together with other technologies such as VR, AR, in order to help us design and not only design, but when the buildings are actually out there to make um, rehabilitations and inspections uh, more safe, accurate, and uh, with an increased production. So lastly, uh, using advanced materials or if you like hybrid materials, um, underdeveloped ones will also help us to compete in the international frontiers and come up with uh, solutions that uh, can drive the market. So what we need to avoid, we need to avoid uh, to look at only the competitive advantage of uh, companies uh, and um, uh, the way that they operate some companies nowadays. Um, so we are uh, fostering collaboration uh, which will then work out for the engineers because at the moment these competitive advantages is creating complexity for engineers, for the mass of engineers. Um, we have to be more flexible to changing the business models, uh, not only how the companies operate, but also how a new product will work if it comes in that company. Uh, people don't feel very confident with uh, and comfortable doing that, but I think uh, we have to explore great opportunities by changing our business models. Um, one of the last ones is data sharing issues, which comes more often and often. We as researchers, you know that we have um, to share publicly our data, but uh, companies don't do that very often. And it's something that, again, it creates quite a lot of uh, complexities. And the most important of all for me is not getting involved early enough. So companies that they're still waiting for someone else to lead and then take the, um, uh, follow them. So uh, getting involved as early as possible is the key to success here. So before I come to an end, I would like to highlight two different projects that we have uh, advertised on Confer's website. You can, um, easily get them through the QR codes and you can see what sort of research we are uh, doing with uh, our collaborators. Both of them are related to the reuse of structural steel. One project is more interested um, uh, in uh, understanding the material properties that we get from reclaimed steel. Uh, the other one is more to uh, develop such a tool for enabling the reuse. Uh, both projects are applied for steel as well as modular construction, so have a look at them. I would like to thank you for the attention and um, I would close this presentation by showing this futuristic skyscraper, uh, which is a modular construction as you can see clearly and it's got embedded a lot of technological advancements. I feel that we're not really far from that. In fact, that is a combination of things that we already do nowadays in our structure. So uh, I think it's a great example to have in mind when uh, you are coming, uh, you're facing something uh, really challenging, something new, and uh, you have that reservation before you are um, saying yes to explore that solution. So thank you very much for uh, attending my presentation.